What's up guys, this is a little bonus episode where we're gonna talk about Rails counter cache, how you can add them in at the very beginning of your Rails app, and also how you can add them in later on for performance improvements. So what we're gonna do is basically create a little example of a forum, so users will have threads, uh, users will have the number of threads that they've created, so we'll have a count on them. And forum threads, of course, will have a count as well for the number of forum posts that are in the database. So that is gonna be our simple example. This can apply to anything you might possibly wanna do. Um, Twitter's a great example where you go to a user's profile and it shows how many people um, are following that user, how many following they are, uh, or how many people they are following and how many tweets that they've made. So there's three associations for Twitter and they definitely wanna cache that value because if you were to query you know, my 30 or 40,000 tweets or whatever ridiculous number that is and count those up in the database one by one, that's ridiculous and that would be way, 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 way too slow for building a site like Twitter. Um, and this is a really, really simple uh, feature to add to your Rails app. This came up uh, from a suggestion on the forum, so thank you for that. And let's dive into our example. So we're gonna create a new Rails app and let's just call it forum example. Keep it nice and simple. This is gonna have our three models. Remember, we're gonna have users, we're gonna have forum threads and forum posts. So if we CD into our forum example, we can then generate our model for a user. They'll probably need a name or email or whatever, you know. You might create this with device or something or you might just roll this from scratch. We're gonna not do anything other than a blank model with a name and we will also add forum threads count as an integer. This is gonna be the column that the counter cache will update and we'll make a tweak to the migration to default the value of this integer column to the number zero so that it always has an integer that we can work with and display. So that is all we're going to need on the user model. This will go ahead and create our migrations for that and once we're done creating all of our uh, model migrations, we'll go edit those and add in those defaults. So here we go, we will have our model for forum thread. This is probably gonna need a name for the thread. We'll also want our user references. Um, this is gonna generate a user ID column that is an integer and it will point to the user. That's the column that we will monitor and anytime that you create a thread, we will look up that user and then update their forum threads count whenever we create a forum thread or whenever we destroy one, we can decrement that forum threads count. So here, we're also gonna want to add forum posts count as an integer and that way the forum thread can keep track of how many posts it has. Um, you might wanna display that number. So we will add that here as well and we can generate that model and we can also generate our model for forum post and this one is going to have a body as text, but it's also gonna need a user references because every post comes from a user. Um, we just need to display you know, who posted that. And so we'll have that user references, but notably we did not add the forum post count to the user. So we're gonna add that in afterwards and show you how to add this uh, to an existing database. So you will already have data and you'll need to go populate that column that you just add and we'll show you how to do that after we do this basic example. So this one also needs a forum thread references so that that can be the association that goes and updates this forum post count. And that should be it. So if we open up MacVim now, and go into our database migrations. We can add a default of zero, and I'm gonna also say null is false, so that we always have some sort of integer uh, for these columns. So that's gonna be good, and we can paste that in as well on forum post count, and that will set up our database. Now we can go ahead and migrate that in our console. So let's run rakedb migrate. And once that is done, we will be able to test this out just after we go and make a counter 
cash option as true on our associations. So the reason this belongs on the belongs to, um, the reason this goes on the belongs to, is because whenever you create a forum post, that is actually the trigger for a callback that counter cash true will go and execute. So whenever you create one, whenever you delete one, this is going to go look at the belongs to and say, hey, you have this column, I want you to go and increment or decrement that number so that we can display that uh, count and keep it in sync. And so the reason it belongs on the children or the child model um, is because that is where the action is really happening. So it's either getting created or destroyed and then it goes and updates the parent who has the cache. So that is all we need on forum posts and forum threads is going to need the same thing on a uh, user. Uh, there we go. Now before we go test this in the Rails console, we need to make sure that we get the other side of the association set up. So we have has many forum posts here on the forum thread and the user has many forum threads, but they also has many forum posts because we created that association as well. So we have those um, the user to a forum thread and the user to a forum post and we also have the forum thread to the forum post. So we have kind of a uh, three associations going on there and they're all kind of interconnected. So that is kind of what you would need for a forum. All of that is good and we can run our Rails console. We can create our user that we want to test all this with. Let's call him Bob. Bob is going to um, Create a forum thread so we can create from the association and automatically set the user ID there if we use that association. We can create that first thread um, like so and you will notice that the forum post count is automatically set to zero and that works great and we got that insert and it set it to zero and all of that. Um, on a database level you'll notice that none of the parameters passed into the insert into was actually that zero. Nothing um, that we had to do controlled that value. So the database level um, is setting that default to the column, which is nice. But you will also notice that we issued an update to that user and we took that forum threads count and we added one to it with this. So in the database, it actually took this coalesced the count of that column and um, said, well, if it's null, let's set it to zero and then let's also add one to it. And all of this is done on a database level. So there's no Ruby involved for incrementing or decrementing that column, which is really neat. Um, so this then gives us Bob with a forum threads count of one. So we have that automatically working. We can then we can then do the other type of forum thread create where we go directly through the model. We then need to set, of course, user to Bob and the name of that could be second thread. And we can create this. It's gonna do the exact same thing and sets up Bob with uh, forum threads count as two. So it's automatically updating that variable that we have uh, as well on our user variable. Our The letter U is our variable for Bob and that's keeping that up to date uh, on him as well. So that is all working super well and giving us exactly what we want. If we were to create a third one, so let's go up here and create a third thread we can then go and do that. Bob is going to have forum threads count as three, but if we then go and destroy that, forum thread.last.destroy, then we will get the delete, and we also get an update where it decrements that forum threads count. So it's keeping track of those when we create and when we destroy automatically, and it's setting those callbacks by simply adding that counter cache is true option. This of course all works as well with the forum threads and their uh, associated forum posts. So let's create a couple of those. Let's grab that forum thread first and create one of a forum posts 
on there. So we'll say create user is you. So Bob will post inside his own thread and we'll set some text for the body. And let's go do that a couple times for that thread. So I created a bunch of those and we'll use that to go back in later and make sure that we can then add a counter cache for Bob, all the users, that we can keep track of how many posts that they've made. So we've created those in the database, but we don't have a counter cache and we wanna add it afterwards. And so this is where a lot of people will be adding counter caches. So this is the situation where you might have an existing database already and you wanna add counter cache to it so that you can get performance improvements for keeping track of that and displaying that number for each user. But one of the problems is that when you create the forum posts count column on the user, it's gonna default to zero, but as we know, Bob already has a bunch of records. So if he deleted one of his forum posts, it would actually go to negative one because it would be zero by default. So our migration this time needs to be slightly different where we add the column, but we also go and update the value for every user in the database so that we go and count that user's number of posts and we go set that value to the correct value so that once that is done, everybody has the correct number of forum posts. So let's dive into that. This is gonna look really similar to the way we did it before. We're gonna generate a migration instead of a model and we're gonna add forum posts count to users. This is going to be forum posts count as an integer column. We can generate the migration and then we're gonna edit it and we're gonna do an extra little bit this time. So we can go to Vim and open up that new migration. This time we wanna add default as zero. We can set null as false and we need to go through all of the existing records in the database and update them with the uh, current count. So Rails actually provides a reset counters method that you can pass in a ID for a record and then the counter, um, which would be forum posts, and it will go ahead and update that column for you. So I'll show you that example, but that can be a lot slower than another option that we'll talk about after that. So let's try this first one out see how that goes. What we need here is we need to find each of the users and we can take them and then reset the counters on it. So this syntax is a little odd. You actually go and say user.reset counter and we pass in the user ID and the association we want to count. So forum posts and that will loop through each of those users and set that. Now remember, we need to go and set up that count on the user forum posts, and this does not go on the user. It goes on the forum post object. So we go to forum post.rb, uh, and we put that counter cache on here. So we wanna make sure that it's on the user side there, and this should loop through each of your users and reset the counters. Of course, we should try this and see if it works. And let's run rakeDB migrate. And this should take uh, a second to load those users out of the database after it adds that column and to write those values to it. So now if we run Rails console, we should be able to load up our first user. And here we can see that the forum post count is actually a value of six. So earlier I created six forum posts for Bob, so that is updating that correctly to the value that is set in the database, and that works well. Now, I'm going to roll back this migration uh, because I wanna show you another option that you can use to make this a little faster. Now, in our situation here, this is pretty uh, fast as it is. We only have one user in the database, and we only have six forum posts in the database as well, so we have a small database. If you have a database that's larger, like 100,000 records or you know a million records or something like that, you can use raw SQL here to actually improve the performance of this um, so that you're not loading all those records into Rubyland and updating the count. So you can do that all in SQL instead. So let's take a look at how we do that. I'm gonna clear this out and pull up the browser 
And uh, Ryan McGeary wrote a really great post on this, so I wanna give him a shout out. And the example that he uses, um, we can grab the code from that and dump it into my, our migration. So his uh, example here actually executes a raw SQL update and it does a nested select. So it will select the count for, in his case, comments on a post. We will change that to work with our forum posts and forum threads or, or users. Um, and we will go through and then update the users, set the forum post count, and so on. So we'll go make our changes for our models, but we can use this example in order to make a massive improvement in performance. So for example, with uh, 25,000 posts and 100,000 comments, this took uh, the Ruby version of it, the reset counters version, 144 seconds, but doing it in just regular old SQL took 1.3 seconds in his example. So that's pretty, pretty big uh, performance difference and something you might want to consider if you're adding this to an already large application. So the setup for his is a little bit different. We are going to pass this in and you will notice that he uses this reversible method and this is actually for migrations that are reversible. So you might remember there used to be a self.up and self.down in your migrations but that got changed to this change method so we only have one and the reason for that is when you migrate up you want to add columns and when you migrate down you want to be able to remove columns or kind of revert your changes. And so change now actually knows if it's going down, it knows the opposite of add column would be remove column. And so if you have something that you only wanna do up one time and you don't wanna do it going uh, down, you can use this reversible and you can tell it, well, if we're going up, then call this code. And if we're going down, you could add that as well with dir.down and you could uh, set up that however you want. So we want this code to only run when it's going up and not down because obviously we'd be trying to update a column that didn't exist and that wouldn't make much sense. And so here we can go modify his uh, comments and posts and we can say, well, we actually want to update users and we want to do users.id and our column associating them is user ID. And for comments, we actually want to replace that with forum post. And so I'm gonna do a substitute in Vim. So you can say, let's replace all references of the word comment with forum posts and do that. So this is now going to update the users, set the forum post count column to the result of this subquery, the select. And so that's going to select the count for uh, the forum posts where the user ID equals the current user. So it's gonna go through and update every single user record in the database and make that subquery and do that all in one command, which will be super nice. Now is the moment of truth. We can run this in our console, run rakedb migrate, because we already rolled back, we got rid of that other column. And you can see here that this actually includes an execute and um, that is running that SQL. So we can see that it is running that SQL command for us. And our migration completed um, in 0 .0, almost 0 0.02 seconds. So that was really quick, but our database is really, really small. And so you're not gonna see hardly any performance difference between these two, but you would if you had 100,000 comments or 25,000 uh, posts, so that would be a much bigger database to operate on. So this is another option if you would like to use that to update your uh, counter caches to be set with the correct values as you are adding that column. And the other thing that I wanna point out before we leave this episode is that when you use the, let's grab this user, when you use these columns and when you call count, you should make sure that you actually reference this column every time from now on. So for example, if we wanna find out for the user's profile and we maybe wanna print out Bob's forum posts, the number of those, what we could do is we could say forum post.count, 
this is actually gonna issue a select query and we don't wanna do that. The reason why we added this column is we wanna avoid making this select count. Uh, query. So what you want to make sure that you do every single time in your entire code base from now on is reference those counter cache columns. So always, always, always use those columns that you added everywhere in your application so that you're not still selecting counts for, um, for these records. Otherwise, you're not getting any benefit from it and there's no reason you added that counter cache. Um, so here you can see we ran this and it did not hit the database whatsoever this time around. And that's exactly what we want. And you can use these then in your views and print out that value or wherever else in your Rails app that you want it, um, want to display that information or query with it or whatever. Always use those columns and you will get the benefit of that um, in performance. So that is it for this episode talked way more about this than I thought I might, but uh, hopefully that was useful and you get your head fully wrapped around it and you can take a look at the um, raw SQL update, which I really liked and I thought it was really great to be able to include in this episode. So I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.